I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 9th of April, 2023. That makes it Easter, and that means this is the culmination of Semana Santa here in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be talking about is it safe in Nicaragua? And a few topics about news coming from the north right after the bump. Today I am out in a beautiful field location, get, taking in some fresh air, getting a beautiful bit of sunshine in this great meadow uh, surrounded my view. I hope yours is good. I can't see the screen that great. My view is fantastic. It's just meadows and wooded trees and, and gorgeous dappled sunlight coming through the leaves, the hills in the distance, and a few distant fields that I can see. It's it's beautiful. Honestly, if you like the great outdoors and a little bit less of a forest and more of a uh, wooded uh, farming community, this area is truly fantastic. It's also really warm. This week is between 96 and 100 degrees nearly every day. It's not terrible right now, but it is exceptionally warm for sure. Today is Sunday and it is absolutely jam packed out at the hotel on the beach. I am avoiding it. I have no need to be out there. No need to see how busy it is. I trust that it is truly epic. Uh, we're hearing reports that everything is great out there. Paul had to run out and for the third day in a row, retrieve cash from the hotel because there's so much we can't leave it there. We have to put it into the bank. Uh, which is a good kind of problem to have. That doesn't normally happen. So all that's been fantastic, but we are hiding because it is Easter. It is the busiest day for everything in the country. Uh, and so if there's a day for an expat to just stay home, order in food, cook at home, keep it simple, today is the day. A few, just a few expats really love the crazy crowds and they go out and do it. But for the rest of us, it is a day that we're just in the way. Right, all the Nicaraguans have these festivities they want to do, and they don't involve expats. And uh, and every restaurant is full, every venue is full, and so if we go out and partake in it, we're really taking space away from people. That this is a really meaningful day for us. It's just a busy day on the beach or whatever. So we let them have this whole weekend, um, and uh, and it makes a great excuse to stay home and do our own thing. So that is what we're doing today. Today's question. Uh, which has come up or been alluded to a million times, is Nicaragua safe? And of course we have talked about it on the channel, but I really want to talk about it again and be able to put up the title, Is Nicaragua Safe? Uh, which is likely what brought many of you here to the show today. For those who watch my channel religiously, and for anyone who's been to Nicaragua, I think this question comes across as honestly absurd. If you watch me walking around, you know that I walk through poor neighborhoods, large cities, wilderness areas, fields, forests, you name it, I'm in it, and at no point am I worried has anything bad happened. I'm not saying nothing bad will ever happen. No place is perfect, but we have been so lucky, and I've been doing this for years, and the degree of safety, the degree of comfort, that I have doing this is so high. Uh, and statistically, Nicaragua has been uh, competing with Canada over the last three years for the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. Let me say that again, the safest country on this half of the planet. And then it doesn't make it as safe as Germany, that does not make it as safe as Sweden. Right? There's a handful of European countries that are so ridiculously safe. No, we're not that safe. But when you compare it to all of Asia, all of Africa, all of Latin America, North America, Australia, all those places, Nicaragua either absolutely dominates or competes strongly with the safest of the safe. And it's noticeable that nearly all people who even it occurred, the only ones to whom it even occurs that Nicaragua might not be completely safe are Americans. And this is important because the idea that Nicaragua is not safe is consistently being created through American propaganda. It's important to understand Mexico is currently going through a crisis and it is not completely safe. Certainly you can travel to Mexico safely, but it, it does have some dangers going on. 
the Northern Triangle, that is Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, they do have a high level of crime up there, of, of violent crime, and it can be dangerous. It's worth noting that El Salvador has gone so far out of their way to become safe that they're actually incredibly safe at the moment. So we're, we're going to Historically, El Salvador has been dangerous. At the moment, it may be competing with Nicaragua for how safe it is. Uh, Costa Rica is not dangerous, but it is not entirely safe. It is more dangerous than, say, most of the United States or, or Canada for sure. Panama is pretty safe, but again, not Canada safe. Nicaragua stands out as so ridiculously safe in the midst of a region known for being less than entirely safe that... It, there's a little bit of, you can understand that people uh, don't really think about Nicaragua a lot and associate it with Guatemala and those other countries. And sometimes it just gets blended in and it's like, oh yeah, it's its own country. Oh, it has its own safety uh, compared to those others. Like, yes, the U.S. and Canada are completely different places too. Um, and so you can understand why people sometimes do get confused or why propaganda from the United States has such an easy time convincing people that there's something to be worried about here because uh, what little bit Americans tend to know of Nicaragua tends to be from a America is um, occupying or bombing or assaulting the country and using um, um, really inappropriate relations with Iran to try to move weapons into Nicaragua. Of course, the thing you have to ha look at that historically is, wait, it wasn't Nicaragua that was dangerous. It was the U.S. invading Nicaragua for the in the 1900s that made it dangerous. It was the U.S. that was dangerous. Yes, it was Americans in Nicaragua making it dangerous, but it wasn't Nicaragua being dangerous. It was Nicaragua. And, and when they say it was a war zone, we're talking decades ago, right? And it was American troops. And so... It's, it's kind of self-fulfilling news. Oh, we sent some military down there to harass the country, and it's dangerous down there because <laughs> we're making it dangerous, right? Like, come on. Then using that 40 years later to say, oh, you heard, did you hear it? It's dangerous down there. People actually think that the war they heard about in the 1970s is current, right? That's like saying the U.S., oh, the U.S., they're still in Vietnam, right? Sorry to ju jump in on other Scott, but I just really wanted to add a little bit of context here because I was looking this up because it suddenly hit me. So I'm 47, I'm middle-aged, but I'm not that old. And the war that most people um, who are today concerned about things in Nicaragua that they're thinking of is the Contra War from the United States invading the country, sorry for the construction, uh, between, in the 1980s. That ended by 1990, at the same time that the Cold War ended. It's important to note that was 32 years ago from now, making it farther away in time now than my birth was to the surrender of Japan in World War II. Literally, I was born closer to the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki than people are today to the Contra War uh, in the 1980s, which was a US-led war. Very important that this was a US war taking place in Nicaragua. That's how far separated we are from that in time. This is a long time ago in historic terms. That means that the remnants of that war, while remembered, no longer really apply in any way. Just like when I grew up in the United States in the 1970s and 1980s, we were not every day thinking about the danger of us being in World War II anymore. That was a historic thing that we saw in movies. Yeah, that was terrible. That was a long time ago, and the U.S. is no longer there. Or we are, but we're tourists now right? Those things that people are remembering about Nicaragua or the things that people are repeating about Nicaragua are so old. It's kind of like the Panama Canal thing. If you haven't seen it, go watch my video on the Panama Canal. I, I'm No. The thing about the Nicaragua Canal, go watch my video on the Nicaragua Canal. I looked it up recently and I found the Nicaragua Canal, the same news, more or less, that we have now, the same fake news that's going around with, oh, there's going to be a canal there. It's really going to happen. No, it's not. No, it's not. Go watch the video. That's people trying to trick you. In 1859, I found that same information on a map in a historic map collection. Exact same location, same stuff, future site of the canal, 164 years ago. So when you see people post comments on my show and say, no, 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 it's really happening, Scott. You're making this up that it's, it's canceled. All this Wikipedia information is fake. Go look it up. 164 years, you think 
I'm making up that it's not really happening. Not one shovel has been, <laughs> been lifted on that project in 164 years. You're, be, you're having a, a, someone's trying to pull a fast one on investors is what's going on. So there's all this ancient information. And because Nicaragua is a tiny country, because Americans don't generally think about it, we don't talk about Nicaragua very much. It is extremely easy for tiny bits of fake news. Oh, I heard it's dangerous. Oh, I heard there's drugs. And no one checks because, well, I've heard that Latin American countries can be dangerous. I've heard a lot of Latin American countries have drug traffic. I'll just assume Nicaragua falls into like everyone else. And as many Americans think, it's just Mexico, right? No. This is not Mexico, nor is this a country that borders Mexico, nor is this a country that borders a country that borders Mexico, right? Mexico's three countries away by the closest path. And yes, there are some historic connections with Mexico, but we're talking 200 years ago, 202 years ago, since they separated from each other, things have changed a lot. If you're thinking that Nicaragua is Mexico somehow related, remember that the United States was mostly part of Mexico more recently by quite a bit than Nicaragua is. So when you say, ah, isn't Mexico d dangerous or whatever, I think everybody's associated with them. It's the U.S. that we think of as being part of Mexico here because the, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada are just lumped together as North America with most most of the U.S. just having been Mexico 30 or 40 years after Nicaragua separated from Mexico, as did the countries north of us. So we've been separated from Mexico by multiple countries for quite some time. So is it safe in Nicaragua? It's beyond safe. No country is 100% safe, but trust me, it is safer than where you are. The most dangerous part of your journey of coming to Nicaragua is getting to your American or Canadian airport. Canada, that may not be true, but in the United States, it certainly is. It is your trip to the airport because the most dangerous things you do are drive in a car and be in the US. Those are your points of danger, right? Consistently, look at the news really carefully. Everything that comes out of the US that accuses Nicaragua or something or suggests that something bad is happening in Nicaragua, nearly every situation if you took the news and reversed the words Nicaragua in the United States and read it as Nicaragua accusing the U.S. of those things, oh, the U.S. has a lot of shootings. The U.S. has a lot of political instability. The U.S. has people who are running for government being tried in court for things. The U.S. has a lot of corruption. You start reading those things, you go, wait a second, wait a second. Everything they're claiming is simply taking the U.S. news of the current social problems going on in the U.S., relabeling it with Nicaragua, and no one questions it. But that's all they're doing. There is no real news of any sort coming out of Nicaragua being repeated in the U.S. Some of the names are being changed so it matches the real names here. That's about it. It is so far from reality. And what amazes me sort of, is the number of people, mostly Americans, but some other places too, Canada for sure, who get this news that is so obviously disconnected from reality and then repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. So many of my viewers report that they have family and friends who come out and say, but it's dangerous. Where do you get that from? What's your source for that, right? Is there, and even in the US, I struggle to find legitimate news outlets with any of this information. It's hardly a concerted effort by serious journalism to paint Nicaragua in a bad light. It is fringe news. It's, it's little like articles on Twitter or Facebook. It's not media outlets. It's not professional journalists in nine, nine maybe 19 times out of 20. It's absolutely just fringe fake news outlets that look kind of official, repeating the same line over and over again. And we get the same problem. You go on Reddit and you mention Nicaragua, or I post this video and it will be in the comments. People who obviously didn't watch this video, because if they did, they would say, oh, I'm not gonna repeat the exact same statement that the government always has me repeat because it'll be obvious that I'm supporting his claim, but they're not gonna watch the video. They're going to post the same statements. Now, of course, YouTube automatically blocks uh, hate speech and, um, and political fake news whenever it detects it, so I do. I do have to say, I'm very impressed with my audience on this channel. It is relatively rare that we get blocked by YouTube's filters. And when we do, because I get to see a bit of it, um, a lot of the time, it's not very bad. It's someone just 
inching over the line and breaching a topic that shouldn't be there. Or uh, sometimes, it, sometimes it's, it's pretty bad. There are certain absolute fake claims that only make sense in an American context that are repeated. So you know that there's an American origin because anyone else saying it, it, it just would it'd be gibberishy. Um, and so there's, there's certain things you can detect as being American propaganda being repeated uh, and that people go out of their way to find these videos and repeat that exact propaganda fake news. Uh, over and over again it tells you quite a bit about what's going on um, but th but for the most part I can go weeks without a single thing being blocked um, I have a few people who post regularly they do get blocked sometimes it's not anything to do with Nicaragua at all sometimes there is just some content that you're like and I've had one or two people blocked because they did personal attacks on me I really don't mind that too much I mean obviously I'd prefer if you didn't make personal attacks on me but it's not a big deal because one, it does get blocked. Two, I get warned, don't look at this if you don't want to see it. And three, it's honestly kind of flattering that people actually go out of their way to personally attack me because they're so offended by the fact that I'm getting the truth out there that, okay, great. That's If that makes you feel better, have at it because I know you're actually paying me a compliment that I'm making enough sense and getting enough news out and showing enough obvious information that it's starting to worry people because it's unseating their worldview, which is often that the U.S. is magically safe regardless of all the information in the news, in, in, regardless of all the sense you feel of all that and uh, uh, showing that the places they like to blame are actually doing really well and it's not supporting the political or socioeconomic views that they're clinging to often somewhat religiously. I want to point out on my YouTube feed today, and of course someone could have been faking this or just doing it for effect, but someone made a PSA that taught how to safely put groceries in your car, how to unlock your car, where to put your groceries, uh, how to maneuver so that your, your head is always maintaining scanning in the parking lots because the United States is so dangerous that you have to train people how to safely put groceries in your car so you don't get attacked while grocery shopping. Of course, anywhere can have an attack during grocery shopping. And of course, traditionally really safe countries like France are burning right now. So I understand everybody has their problems sometimes. But seriously, I grew up in the United States. It is a scary place. You're looking over your shoulder all the time. That's part of the culture. And when you grow up there and never see anything else, you don't realize just how bad it is until you travel and realize you're not scared all the time. Suddenly you're comfortable standing. I don't have to look around while I'm out here and worry about the people. Those, there's people on the street right there. I don't know if you can see any of them, but people could easily sneak up behind me. I don't have any rear view on my camera right now. I could turn it on, but I don't have it on to save battery. And you know, if someone wanted to do something to me, there would be nothing stopping them. I'm not taking any precautions. I don't need to because I'm in Nicaragua. If I was in the United States in this same spot, I'd probably feel pretty decently safe too, honestly. But I wouldn't be as safe. And if I was talking about how safe Nicaragua was, I would honestly be scared that someone overheard me and decided to do something violent. Not very likely, but it's a real concern. Here, it is not. Those things are real. But I saw that video just an hour ago and it really hit me just how terrified Americans are of going to the grocery store. They live, and, and I grew up in America, we lived when I was there in a constant state of being afraid of everyone around you. That's the stuff we don't have here. And so the, the mindset that, oh, isn't it scary everywhere else in the world? No, it's not. Some places are scary. Not here and not a lot of places. And the U.S. tends to work really hard to push the idea that the, the places that are safe feel scary because they don't want Americans coming, going there, finding out, and returning home and reporting, you know, these places the U.S. doesn't like or isn't doing what the U.S. wants, they're actually really pleasant, they're affordable, they're safe, they're healthy. That's not news they want getting out there. That undermines a lot of beliefs in the U.S., Nobody wants that, but you do. You as an individual, whoever you are, you want to know the truth because the truth gives you the power to make decisions. If you wanna stay in America, great, but do so with your own decision, not because you've been made artificially afraid of the rest of the world. Do it because America has the blend of things you love. It's the income that you like, the economy that you like, the type of job, the type of house, the weather. Whatever it is that you love about America, great. Stay in America and love it for America. Don't love it because you think it's where you're stuck because the rest of the world is a war zone. That is not the case. There's all these wonderful options out there 
and one of them is America, and maybe it's the right place for you, but there's a big difference between staying somewhere because you're afraid to find out and staying somewhere because you found out and decided the place you are is fantastic. I traveled all over the world and I decided that Nicaragua was the safe and healthy and wonderful place to raise my family. And like lots of people I know who come here, they come with kids, they come with spouses, they come with hopes and dreams and futures. And it's not just because they like hot weather. It's not just because they love eating beans and rice every morning for breakfast. It's not just because they like six months of sunshine and six months of torrential rain. They do it because it's safe, it's affordable, there's great healthcare, there's opportunity, not necessarily for a business, but for a wonderful lifestyle. They're choosing it because they've looked at the options and it makes sense for them and it might make sense for you. So if people are talking to you and saying, isn't Nicaragua dangerous? Instead of trying to defend it, laugh, right? Come right out. What would make you think that? Why would the safest place, why when America is so dangerous, would you be concerned about me moving to a place that is dramatically safer? And if you think Nicaragua is not safe enough, not Switzerland, for example, why aren't you afraid that I'm in America? And I think one of the things that's telling is when I first started traveling uh, a lot, like living abroad, not just going for vacations. At first, my father was very apprehensive, or mildly apprehensive, perhaps. And the first place that we moved to was Spain, which of course, Spain is very safe. Uh, one, of, one of the safest countries in the world uh, is very stable. It's very easy. And yet he was still nervous because growing up in America, we're taught that even the safest places in the world, so much safer than Nicaragua, are somehow scary. They're not sure why. We're never told what's wrong, just something's wrong there. And then you go to Spain and realize it's hard to imagine what safer could be like. There's no military on the streets. There's no police on the streets. There's no crime. Nothing happens. You can let your little kids run around on the street safely, and they do, because they're not living in a world of fear. And their kids are safer running around on the streets than they are in school in America, which is not saying very much. That's a terrible statement, that going to school in America is more dangerous than living in almost any country on Earth. So at first my father was apprehensive and then we moved to Panama and then to Nicaragua and somewhere around the time that we were in Nicaragua or maybe when we moved to Greece, which is where we moved next. At that point, I remember my father making the point when you first moved abroad, it worried me about your safety and, and just your circumstances living abroad. And I always looked forward to when you would come home. And now that I've seen you living abroad and I've heard what it's really like, and I've started to look in relationship to what it's like in America, now it worries me when you come home. And that's the perspective you typically get if you travel. At first, you're afraid of traveling because it's the unknown. But once it stops being the unknown and reality sets in and you're making real comparisons between places, suddenly, it's, it's a very universal thing that travelers who've become accustomed to living around the world and can live in lots of different places, when they go to return to America, that's the place that makes them the most nervous or one of the places that makes them the most nervous, partially because of the dramatic difference in culture that they have to readapt to, partially because it is actually scarier than a lot of places that you will normally live, and in some cases simply because it's different. But it's a real thing. Returning to America, that's where it gets dangerous. When you leave and go somewhere else, there's a really good chance you're gonna be getting safer even though America doesn't want you to think that. So use that. Don't go on the defensive when people say, isn't Nicaragua dangerous? Isn't it full of drugs? Make them show why they think that's true. Get real news sources, credible news sources, statistics, right? One of the things we were told is, oh, but women's rights. We're like, seriously? Just like the safety, number one for women's rights in the Western Hemisphere. At the time that we moved here, number five in the world. It was competing, but losing to the Nordic countries and the Netherlands, right? The degree to which women have more rights and protections in Nicaragua than the rest of the countries. And one of the countries with the worst track record, especially in the last three years for women's rights, is the United States. Once again, the very thing that people try to accuse Nicaragua of is the very thing that it's really good at, while the place that we were coming from is specifically where they're really bad at it. It's like people don't even make an effort. 
they think that Nicaragua is so little known that they can just say the most outrageous, implausible things and people will kind of believe it. Or if enough people say it, that it'll seem kind of like it must be true. That's not how it works. You can see the videos. It is really, really safe. Along the same lines, this just happened. Just be, as I was coming out to do this filming, so I was already had my topic, I was already ready to come out. And when I came out, uh, I read this thing that we had said, uh, we were talking about education and how in much of the world we start education much, much later and the U.S. pushes really hard to start education really early. Now the U.S. is known worldwide for its terrible education, like truly epically bad. Students coming out of the United States routinely, even coming out of universities, struggle to compete in, in just normal conversations with students coming out of high schools in many other countries. This is a, a regular embarrassment for the United States. But we also know that the United States has a really strong economy because education and income don't actually tie that closely together. And when they do, it is generally separated by generations. It is huge durations that it takes for, for education to catch up and make an actual difference. I just noticed while I'm talking that there are horses way down in the meadow down there. I'm like, what is moving? It's horses. Uh, and one of the things we talked about is in Romania, which is famous for its great education. It's not Finland famous, but, but Romania is known the world over for being an excellent education country that does a great job of educating their students. It has one of the most advanced technological and engineering um, uh, programs at a societal level of any country in the world. Uh, they are very, very uh, scientific, very, very um, engineering oriented. They are a world center of uh, so like software development and, and, and design and those kinds of things. So Romania is, is generally considered a shining example of education, and they don't start sending kids to school until at least age seven. They, they know that uh, playtime and family time are considered more valuable for mental development than classroom time. And so it's an important thing that they do. Finland does the same thing. I don't know the exact ages, but Finland also delays heading into the classroom setting because home is so important. And someone came back and said, well, if that was true, why is Romania so undeveloped and poor? Now, I have to say, my first reaction is, wow, I bet that was an American education because only an American perspective would be able to take a lack of knowledge about a country and use that as a reason to claim a good education, right? So let's break this down really quickly. Why is Romania so undeveloped? Romania so undeveloped? I was there in 2016, that's when I lived in Romania. So yes, I've lived in Romania, and I lived in very poor, very rural Romania, um, but I've, I've been to many of the big cities, I've spent quite a bit of time there, I've been all over, I've been to the universities, um, I've had my photographs stolen there, I've uh, you know lived in a small village, stayed in big towns, uh, worked on learning to speak a little bit of Romanian, traveled all over the region, absolutely love Romania. Uh, and one of the things that they're really, really famous for is their infrastructure. They are famous the world over as far and away, not close, but far and away the earliest, most well-developed technology infrastructure of any, uh, I'm going to say real country on earth. When I say real country, what I mean is uh, China is better in Hong Kong but only in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is not a country, it is a city within China. So China as a whole is behind Romania on average, but Hong Kong itself is ahead. Tokyo in Japan, ahead, but Japan as a whole behind, right? So Romania, we don't have to break it down to a single city. We don't say Timisoara is the best. We say Romania as a country is number one. The exception to this is Singapore. But again, Singapore was just a city in Malaysia, and yes, it got ejected from Malaysia and is now a single city state. It is technically a country and it technically as a single city is ahead of Romania on infrastructure, but it does so by having no rural areas. It is simply just a giant rich city and that one giant rich city is ahead of Romania. But if you were to take Romania and carve out Timisoara, for example, or Bucharesti, those cities would be ahead of Singapore. But as a whole country that has its own farmland and villages and cities and entire infrastructure and is self-sufficient, Romania is the far and away leader in infrastructure worldwide. So that an American, I assume, I have to assume because of, I am using the, my, my point being the poor American education and a complete lack of worldview and scope 
to pick on a country, and this is important. Romania, of all the examples we've used, Germany, Spain, Switzerland, Norway, Sweden, of super safe countries, Romania beats them all. Romania is the safest place you can possibly imagine. I know of no place on earth as safe as Romania. I know of no place on earth as technologically advanced as Romania in an infrastructure way. So the things that they're saying, well, why is Romania so far behind if their education was so good, makes very little sense given that they are world renowned in their education and exactly their infrastructure and safety are number one. So clearly, they don't even know what the topic is here. Then the question is, why are they so poor? And they are pretty poor for Europeans. This is important. Within the European Union, Romania is decently poor. On the world scale, Romania is not a poor country. They make uh, more money than some really leading economies, such as Mexico. They earn quite a bit more than Mexico. Uh, it is a generally poor country, but it has a very low cost of living. So while they earn many times, uh, for example, Moldova, which is directly next door to Romania. Romania has a, has a per capita income of almost exactly 10 10 times that of Moldova, right? 10 times. So it's, Moldova's pretty poor. Romania's above average for sure. It's not a poor country. It's just not Germany rich, right? That's, we're comparing it against really rich, the world's richest countries. And yes, against the world's richest countries, it's not super rich, but it is anything but poor. It has really poor areas, but in general, it does pretty well. And the cost of living is so low, their purchase power parity is so strong that even when you take really poor areas, you take people who are uh, migrant farmers and earning only hundreds of dollars a month, they still live in incredibly safe, incredibly beautiful areas, own their own houses, have swimming pools, get to go to world-class universities, have everything paid for, public transportation, can own Mercedes-Benz and BMWs, they get them cheap there, um, get to travel, have powerful European passports. They get to live really good lives and travel to a lot of places that Americans routinely can't afford to travel to, even when only earning a few hundred dollars a month, generally assuming a dual, dual income, so maybe a thousand dollars a month as more of a, uh, more of a combined average, a little bit less, right? At say $800 a month living in Romania, you can travel all over Europe, have a wonderful lifestyle, eat healthy food, own a house, and do things that Americans can't do. So let me ask you, who's poorer? Those who can afford houses or those who can't? Those who can travel or those who can't? Those who can get good health care or those who can't? Those who are safe or those who aren't? If you look at anything except for the actual per person cash income, Romania looks richer than the United States by nearly every measure. Yes, it's poor, but only, only by a little bit in the grand scheme of things. And why is that? Because the implication was if they had a good education system, they couldn't be poorer than the U.S. because they're still rich. But again, this requires, I assume, a U.S. education where no history or geopolitical science was taught, so they aren't aware that Romania was an occupied country with a dictator for most of the 20th century, from World War II until the late 1980s, until the fall of the, of the Eastern Bloc. Romania was a communist country under a dictator, and they intentionally tore the country apart. They took away all their education. They took away their good jobs. They took away their upward mobility. They truly crippled the country under a terrible, terrible military dictator. And the Romanians tore down that dictatorship and literally lynched them. So they took their country back by force. They chose to protect themselves. Right, but it took a lot because Russia was propping them up. The United States had abandoned them. Right, World War II left them in a precarious position and their friends just left them to the wolves and the wolves were numerous. So they had everything taken away from them, their education, all those things, until the latest generation. The first generation to have any serious education is the generation that is working now and is younger than me. So the, the older people in jobs, and when I was there, you met a lot of these people who grew up with no meat to eat. Now I'm vegetarian, so that sounds great. But 
they didn't have enough protein. They were desperately trying to find ways to get enough protein in their diets. People were starving. Everyone was farming at home. Everyone was a factory worker. No one was working in the sciences. No one was working in universities. All of that fell apart. Now it's all been rebuilt since the 1990s, starting basically from scratch. And during that time, they've managed to put their country back together, create a new democracy, get a stable government, build their educational institutions, create an economy so strong that they were able to join the European Union and are now a major member of the EU and NATO and have been for a long time, all in just a few decades. And they've done so partially because they have an amazing education and they're constantly advancing at an incredible pace. All things the United States can't say that they've done. The U.S. has stagnated or fallen behind during that time. They're coming from a position of power and falling, whereas Romania is coming from a position of being devastated and rising from the ashes. So if they say, why, if just the students today are getting a good education, why haven't these kindergartners magically turned the country around? Now, I understand maybe the context of this question was truly, truly looking for, for insight. Oh, well, if they have such a good education, why... Why are they so poor? But it doesn't read that way. It reads as an attempt to load the question. It attempts to say that three things, that they are poor. They didn't look into Romania. They just made the claim that they're poor. They claim that they had a bad infrastructure. They didn't look into it that they're number one. They just made the claim. And they insinuated that education, even of just a single generation, would instantly guarantee that you would be a rich country, no matter what else you did with that education, no matter how much of it you had, no matter what external forces acted on your country. Which is, and the reason I bring this up, one, is because it's truly offensive, but also because this particular attack, this manner of trying to discredit another people's, is the exact style of attack that we see used on Nicaragua all the time. People will say, here's a set of questions I have, if Nicaragua was such a good country, why are they poor? Why do they speak Spanish? Why don't they? You name the thing that people will accuse Nicaragua of, and then they'll say, if they had a good education, if they are so safe, why are these things? And they intentionally overlook. Now, again, with the Romania thing, maybe someone was truly missing everything and just thinks that a simple education for one generation is enough to fix any amount of external problems. But that alone shows the problems with, I assume, the American education system. I don't know anywhere else on earth where that kind of question could be asked that everyone wouldn't instantly be like, um, you proved the point by asking such a weird question. This loading, you say, if this, then this, and it makes it difficult to say, wait, 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 none of those things are true. Not the ifs, not the then this is, right? If Nicaragua was so safe, why doesn't it? Well, that's not how safety is. Safety doesn't make for a good economy, right? Go to Bosnia. Bosnia doesn't have a super strong economy, yet it's super safe, right? Really, really wonderful country. Sarajevo that everybody thinks of as a bombed out place. And yes, it was bombed at one point long ago. Oh, the bugs are coming out. But now it's incredibly safe. Is their economy super strong? It's okay, but it's not great. Why? Because there's a lot of external factors and a lot of prejudice. Right? And it takes time for economies to build up. It just does. It takes time to build factories. It takes time to build new companies. It takes time to learn the processes. It takes time for the government to figure out how to do those things. And it takes time for those companies to get reputations to work with other com companies. And especially when your entire country has been torn apart, rebuilding all of your connections takes forever. In America, when you want to start a new company, there's a good chance that you have money behind you and you can go meet people who have successful companies and they might use you and you can prove yourself. But when you're coming from a country where those other companies don't exist and you're all starting from scratch together, you don't have those established companies to help pull you up by your bootstraps. You're all just doing it on your own. It is a completely different game. You don't have the power to have your government throw you a bone and be like, oh, we're going to give you a government grant that's just going to make your company rich. And now you don't have to have ever done something hard, right? It's just given to you. None of those things generally exist. And so you have to look at the world in that perspective. And this is where the education in the U.S. really falls apart. And it doesn't give people the power to even understand the world as they see it because we're so focused on pretending the world isn't the way that it is or not knowing anything about it. So it's easy to make statements at any given time about any given country and people don't really have the background to dispute it automatically. And when you don't have the power to dispute it automatically, it's easy to start to think it might be true. 
And so these patterns, watch for them. Watch when people make statements, yes, about Nicaragua for sure, but about other countries as well. There is a pattern used by Americans or the American government or whatever when they assume that you have none of the foundation pieces about a country that they can say these things, it's called a loaded question, and they use it. Yes, you may be able to dispute the first piece, but they do it in such a way that they're trying to establish in your mind that the other pieces are true. It's not the thing they're arguing that they're trying to prove and trying to get you to believe. It's the other pieces. And it's a really effective uh, tactic um, because you don't necessarily catch it right away and you get distracted arguing about the other point. Like the Romania thing, it's easy to get distracted arguing about the education and not realize that they're trying to establish in your mind that the country is actually poor and actually has a bad infrastructure. Those are the things that are easy to dispute, so they don't mention them in a disputable way. They mention them as if they're assumed facts that you're basing other conclusions on. That's the tactic. And so here in Nicaragua, we see it constantly. Well, there's so many drugs, it must be dangerous. Oh, I mean, how would it not be dangerous with so many drugs? And they leave out the part that it doesn't have drugs. This is one of the most drug-free countries you're gonna find in the region. Sure, there's places in the world that have fewer drugs in Nicaragua. No one is saying that there are zero, but it is nothing like any of the countries around it, and certainly not like the US and Canada. This is an area really well known in Central America for not allowing drug trafficking, for not allowing the pass-through, for not allowing the distribution. That doesn't happen here. But everybody wants you to believe that it is, and so that is a specific tactic that they use because it's difficult to refute if you haven't looked into it, and who looks into that? It's not something that people tend to. So it's a very powerful tactic. So watch out for that, and it's not that the person that's saying it to you is necessarily the one who put this the theory together of how to trick you. It's that that is being said to them, and there's all this propaganda built to get people to repeat that because they heard the message, and either they like that message, and so they're happy to just accept it, or they got tricked by it, or they've heard it so much that they just can't believe it's not true, and then they repeat it because they are actually fearful, or they're actually, they, they actually don't like Nicaragua, and so they want negative things to be true, whatever these things happen. I certainly have both of those cases come up, right? There's a lot of people, it's just honestly not having the information to realize what it's actually like, but there are certainly people in our very close social circle who actively hate Nicaraguans for whatever thing it is, but they actually hate the country and they actually hate the people and they really go out of their way to falsify information, make false claims, and try to discredit it. And the same is true in reverse. People will do the same thing about America. That absolutely happens. And there's a lot of fake things said about the United States all the time, right? So it, it's not a universal thing about Nicaragua. It is not a one-way uh, conversation. It is all countries, all regions, all peoples have some amount of pressure to discredit and discourage other parts of the world. We all want to make ourselves look good to some degree, and we all want other, to do so. The easiest thing is to make others look bad, right? Especially those who are far away or poorly understood or poorly known. And so that is a very common tactic the world over. Look for it everywhere, right? Don't, don't make this just about Nicaragua. Certainly, Nicaragua gets it worse than any place I've ever known firsthand, but I'm sure there are lots of countries that get it very similarly that I just haven't been to or haven't been to enough perhaps to realize how much of it happens and how much it isn't true. Here I have a really strong amount of information every day. Here just constantly being barraged and it's so ridiculous. People will say it to me as if I don't know. Well, why is Nicaragua so dangerous? Are you, I, I am here, you know, like there's no way you're gonna make me fall for that. Well, what about all the drugs? Again, I'm here. You realize there's no way you're going to trick me with this. Well, it must be. And they'll say just one thing after another. And it's like, it's like they can't figure out that the tactics they're using only work when someone has no idea and no firsthand observable information. But once you're here, that's why they don't want people to come. Because the instant you set foot here, it takes no time at all for you to go, it's all been a huge lie. 
and then it opens up your mind to how many other things have I been being lied to like this where I have no basis for comparison and just assumed I was being told the truth because why wouldn't I be? It's really, really eye-opening. So that was a really long rant, but it's an important topic. Uh, and I hope many of you take it to heart that there is a lot of misinformation out there. And one of the reasons that I make this channel in general, and one of the reasons that I make it the way that I do, just walking around and showing you the country, is because I want to make it as as literally impossible to dispute as, po as, as possibly I can that what I'm showing you is Nicaragua. I don't have a filter. I don't have a way to hide dramatically anything from you. Yes, I could be assaulted and turn off the camera and, and go get another camera and record later after I've recovered, but I'm recording every day, almost always out in public, to get these videos out in a reasonable amount of time, there's almost no way that I could be hiding anything significant. Yeah, I hide loud noises in the background and, you know, I, I turn away from when a car is coming by. It's not interesting to see. I'm trying to show you stuff that's interesting. Yes, but you're seeing as I walk, as I stand, as I interact in the real world, you're getting a real view of Nicaragua with me. And no matter what I'm telling you, like grain of salt. I could be another person giving you false information, of course, but it's really hard to film the country firsthand every day. Even just turn off the audio. Just look at what I'm showing you. It tells you a lot about Nicaragua. It tells you a lot about what people have been telling you from abroad. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Take some time to share this with friends. Tell them they need to watch this and they need to think about what they're repeating and why they're repeating it and where they're getting their information from and if they're doing anything to validate it and why they feel that information that is so incredulous, right? Why are they believing it? If you've heard Nicaragua is dangerous, look up the stats. It's not dangerous and the, all the stats support that. So why are newspapers, outlets getting away with making that insinuation when it's so clearly not true and every agency is reporting that it's not true? It's important for everyone to have that information. If you like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That helps make everything we do here on this channel possible. And I did hint the other day that there's a new camera coming. It was ordered. It is supposed to arrive in the United States today. I should have it in two weeks, but I'm not telling you any details. That's going to be a surprise. We're going to film with it and see if you can figure out what we've done. Um, and and I'm, I'm really hoping to have some, some cool stuff from that for you. So I'm excited. I'm always excited about new camera stuff. Uh, but thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee and made it possible for me to get a new camera because you guys have made that possible. I am using the money from you guys to get new cool stuff to make content for you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Post on social media. Get in the comments. I want to know what people are telling you. I want to know what you've heard. I want to hear about how you're ready to dispute, what you're worried might actually be true. Uh, and uh, let's discuss it. I will see all of you tomorrow.